writers and readers, I'm Christy Stratus and I recently went to a Sisters in Crime meeting, which is my first ever Sisters in Crime meeting. They are a group of mystery writers and they are national. I had never gone before, but someone from the Writer's Edge that you may have seen on the last panel that I did, Christina Rienzi, she's the president of that, and so she told me about this event and invited me and I went and I loved it. So this event was with Shelly, and I'm sorry if I say this wrong, uh, Frey Dawn. And so I'm going to put her name on the screen just so that you can see what it is and I will link her website down below. She is a New York Times bestselling author who has written uh, 16 or more books, something like that. And a lot of them are mystery and they can be like amateur sleuth and she's done historical mystery. She's done a pretty wide variety of books within mystery. And so she was there to talk to us about historical mystery and what exactly that is, how mystery works, how historical fiction works, them coming together, and she just gave some really great tips. So some of them are basic writing tips, some of them are specifically about mystery or historical fiction. So I thought, I took a whole bunch of notes for you guys. I thought I would make like a mini series. I know we're in the middle of the viewers request stuff, but I just want to take a quick break to go over these notes that I have that I think might help you. So I'm going to read you some of the points that I took down. This is going to be a few videos, and I'm going to give you my comments on them too. So the first one is, she had said that even if you're writing mystery, more important than even the clues is the characters. And she, I'm reading like off my, off my, off my notes. <laughs> so uh, if you see me looking down, that's what I'm looking at. So she had said the characters are the most important thing and if the reader isn't interested in what happens at a gut level, you lose them. And I thought it was interesting that phrase, a gut level, almost like instinct, like anytime something happens, you're like, oh, you know, something along those lines. So I just like the phrasing of that. So I thought I'd share it with you. And I am also a big believer in character based stories. Plot is fine. But for me, I have to be involved in the characters. All of my stories are character based. So I totally get what she is saying. She also said that small towns are big right now in cozy mysteries and amateur sleuth mysteries. So that's just a tip for those of you who write those kinds of books. She said that even peripheral characters, like not main characters, not secondary, but peripheral or tertiary characters, can't be stick figures and they must be real, which is something I'm also a believer in and I think it's one of the hardest things to do. Making characters that really don't have that much to do with the story more 3D and giving them any kind of depth can be difficult and you can end up with someone who just walks on, says something, and then just walks away, which, you know, I mean, as always, there is no rule that's going to cover every situation, but I do understand what she's saying about these characters that are really just barely there, still having some kind of depth, as in speaking naturally and how they enter being natural. Actually, we're going to get to that in just a second. So that's an important thing, and it's one thing to keep your eye on when you are doing revisions. And one of her pet peeves, she said, is not be she doesn't like when anybody is glib about murder when they write about murder. She said it's a serious matter no matter what. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I'm sure there are some writers out there who might try to make it funny. Of course it's up to everyone and I'm sure that different readers and different authors feel differently about it, but I just thought it was an interesting thing that she said. You can't let your author self interfere in the action or even details that characters notice. So that's another thing that I have definitely talked about and it's really important to me in my books. You might notice that in Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, hopefully. <laughs> um, you definitely don't want any of the action to sound like you as the author are describing it. I need this to happen and so I'm going to write it like this. It has to be all through the character's eyes. Everything should be through the character's eyes regardless of who that is. And so when she's saying even details characters notice, one of the things that she mentioned is if somebody is walking into a room, and this is, I believe, the exact example that she gave, somebody's walking into a room and you just start describing the room. That's the author giving details. That's the author saying, let me describe this room for you, the reader, as opposed to the character who walks into the room and instead of it being just this big description, it'll say something more like, 
you know, the person walks into the room, she bumps into a table, what was the table doing out there? Oh, right, look at all these extra tables that had to be there for the meeting she was attending. So now you know that the room has a lot of tables that are sort of sticking out awkwardly into the room. And she said, you know, she smelled uh, lasagna. You don't have to say she walked into the kitchen and saw lasagna or something like that, you know? So it is in those details and that makes it much more natural and it does make it from the character's point of view. I thought that was a really important thing that I am like a stickler about with my work. She said that she doesn't recommend using a peripheral character as a murderer, but if you choose to, then her advice is the presence of that character has to be well interwoven like DNA. That's her quote, interwoven like DNA, which is, I, I totally agree. I really hate, and this is what she's talking about, I really hate when you have a character who is mentioned in the very beginning and then disappears for the rest of the book and then suddenly is the murderer at the end. And like on the one hand, a lot of times I guess that it's that person because they were mentioned so briefly and it's kind of obvious. But on the other hand, it's just, it's not so great, is it? <laughs> so she had said, um, don't just mention them and never mention them again. It's not fair. And she uses the word fair and unfair a lot in when she spoke. She was saying what is fair to the reader, especially in terms of revealing who the murderer is, and what is unfair, even in terms of clues. And I thought that the terminology she was using was, it works very well, it makes a lot of sense for when you're trying to guess who the murderer is, you're trying to put things together, yeah, there is fair and unfair. I definitely agree with the way that she phrased that and it made a lot of sense. She said, if you're going to have it be a periphery character, make sure that like if it's someone in a rocking chair a lot of the time that they're there in that rocking chair and you see them several times in the book so you're aware that they're sort of watching and they're there. And it's not just like one mention at the beginning and then randomly it's this person. So it doesn't seem like any kind of cop out, like who should be the murderer? I'm not sure, let's just make it that guy from the beginning. I think that made a lot of sense. And then another thing that she said was that the mood of the main character should translate into their actions and the way they go about things. I think that that is self-explanatory. It makes a lot of sense. If you have an angry main character, they should go about their investigation in an aggressive way. That just is carrying through the traits that you set forth in the very beginning. The intention must be there always, even in small actions. There shouldn't be anyone there for no reason. She says, what's in it for me? There has to be a what's in it for me for every single character, even if they're smaller characters. And at first I was sort of like, eh, I think that's a little bit picky. But then when I really thought about my characters in Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, even the smaller ones have a what's in it for me. And that surprised me a little bit. I didn't realize that I was doing that, but it just proves that it is something that will make your story grounded in itself. If you know what I mean, each character makes sense within the situation, within the story as a whole, and just as a character themselves. So those are just a few of my notes. I'm gonna go over more of them. I think I'm gonna be able to do it every day. So watch out for more of these. I have a lot of notes for you guys. I think they're very helpful and I'm really enjoying discussing this with you. So I will see you soon.